thanks for tuning in to a brand new episode of the Miss B Show. As we get closer to the end of the season, I spend time with some amazing ladies who have spent energy, time, and talent into grooming the younger generation to make them better and empower them, of course. If you've been watching the show back on episode three, which was the New Year's episode, we have Nabil on set. He's back to Cameroon and what he's intending to do is groom himself in his sector and make it even more powerful than what he was when he was here before. He's kicking off with the concept, this is Africa. Let's take a look. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Uh. On the wise for here, no play. Sabi near the hide over Sabi all day. We don't need wife for yeah, don't they? Small, no be sick, that be big country. Bounce a man for tear, you know we so okay. Life for yeah, not teach with the young all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see the hustle all day, we just stop and really quick with some hustle called fate. Small catch a chick, the work for big pay. Guess man off his sleep where the job never pay. Puzzle on the beat, see the wait now pay day. Life from repeat, I beg you press play. Now welcome to the streets where the real boys stay. No to the feet with the win all day. We killing that mother like boom bah, yeah. X on the matter like the CIA. Me for love for yeah. Since you've been alone, they try to come and fuck or share. We just for the world, you should make us in the world by me. Okay, I'm telling like that. You put it on ice, you put it on your face. All things everywhere. Jump on the roof, CI. Pass me the tape, CI. Me and my men, they're my feeling. Cause this is Africa, CI. Jump, jump on the roof, CI. For years, a basket, a month pass to la moto bashe. We know they like chop, no one day. We know the chop flop, big CFA. We know they like mob with the lock code. Now actually talk, talk a code. We know get passport for take we go there. But when you go there, go find we for I love music and I hope you do too. So this is Navio making me groove and swing. I'm looking forward to that radio show. I'm sure it's gonna be a bang. Now my guest, she's fun, entertaining, feisty, noisy. Hmm. I've been screaming all morning trying to get her to sit down. But most amazingly, she's multi-talented singer, writer. She used to dance. <laughs> we'll be testing some of those moves today. It's Sandra von Dufay. Thanks for coming on the show. Hello. Let's talk yes. about your phone. Yes. I need to understand why the name and what's the story behind the book. Right. Well, um, Yefon is a very powerful name for my village. It means the mother of a king. And I told you I'm very superstitious. Mother of a king. Yes. So I thought, you know, I'm making this story about a girl who's being educated. What name can an American, a German, a Cameroonian from Family K tribe from Yaoundé remember? Mm -hmm. Let me pick a name that was easy and meant something powerful because I believe in energy in the universe that we live in. So yeah. Yefon, the meaning of the name, mother of royalty, are you kidding me? So that's how the name started. You know, the story behind it was when I was about 19, I started working yeah. on a story that you know, African women could play in movie-wise. It was first a movie at yeah. the start. Um, you know, moving to LA at around the age of 21, wanting to win an Oscar so bad, wanting to make it happen in the film industry, I started to fall into certain problems that black actresses face. Okay. I don't want to play slave. I don't want to depict Africa in a negative way. Yeah. I don't want to have to change who I am to please an audience who, first of all, doesn't deserve my changing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Changing force. So. I said, you know what, I like to be the change that I like to see. Let me write something. I didn't even know where it was gonna go. I just wanted to write something that was a powerful story that black actresses could get to play. Yeah. That's how it started, honestly. I understood you danced before, mm -hmm. you know, you've acted as well. Yeah. And you're act you're currently acting. I'm currently acting, yeah. And then you wrote this book. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's something you figured out you could do all from the beginning or you yeah. just fell into some of them as you went along? No, um, I've been writing earlier than everything else. Okay. At the age of five, I already had 10 unpublished books that I wrote. Okay. Six years old, I mean, I went back to my grandfather's house and I saw all these books and I was like, wow, like this is, I'm legit. Mm -hmm. I'm a legit artist. Let them know, you know what I mean? Just playing. <laughs> <She> <laughs> <claims> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> no, no, you have to. It. And I was so proud of myself to. because I'm talking about legit stories that I could rewrite now and yeah. it would still sell, you know okay. what I mean? And then the acting part happened later on. I was really nine years old when I saw the movie Sarafina. That's 
it's a black girl from South Africa. That could be me. And I'm very um, pro power. I want to fight for what's right. So I was mm. like, I want to do that. And eventually, it was for the wrong reasons. I can't even lie. Okay. I wanted to be famous. I wanted to win an Oscar. I think that drove me a lot, and it, it was a very big driving factor. So and acting I'm, here, yeah. acting here in Cameroon, and acting out of Cameroon. Yeah. So you work with a variety of talent as well. Yes. How would you say acting in Cameroon differs from acting out there? You know what? I haven't acted in Cameroon recently, but let me say, the last Back time then. I acted in Cameroon yeah. was 2009. Comparing that to see an American set, say with me working on. Um, Okay, I did this movie. Uh, it's, it, was, it was with Aiken and a bunch of other American actors. And Aiken is not an actor, but American people, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, the amount of, 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 of uh, uh, what's the word? The cameras on the set are scary, okay? When you walk into the set, you know not. Put on my suit, I'm about to kill it. I can't joke around, you know? Because when you walk in, you feel like, forgive my friend, shit's about to get real. <laughs> That's how it feels, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> And from the time you walk in, I yeah. like the fact that people mm -hmm. are so polite. Hello, ma'am. Nice to meet you. That's your trailer. That's where you're going to be dressing up at. You know, do all this stuff. But it's a, you really feel professional and you feel challenged. It's like the amount of money on this set, I'm not going to dis disgrace my family today. Mm -hmm. I have to give it everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time when I was acting here in Cameroon, it was still a very early stage. Everything was, you know, was quite a hustle. We had to struggle to get there on set. You know, there was little bread and chocolate we couldn't eat. It wasn't... I don't know how it is today, so it's unfair for me to answer that to question. Make, yeah, I don't know. Comment. Yeah, but as, as, I mean, at the time, it was still very new. You were very close to Okawa Shazne. Yeah. What happened? I hear you're beefing. I'm beefing with Okawa. I am Spill. not. Spill. No, please. Go Sandra, ahead. the truth. I'm being. If honest. you lie. If I lie, God strike me dead. I'm not beefing, beefing with Okawa. Okawa. Please. Where's that? What happened? From? But you guys were really close before. No, I, I met her on the, the first time I met Okawa was on the set yeah. of a movie. I didn't know her prior to that. Yeah. And then we finished the movie and then she went back home and went back home. Like, where's this coming from? Very confused. Wait, what's going on? Do we trust Sandra on this? Oh, geez. Do we let it go? <laughs> no, no, seriously, I'm really curious. Wait, where's this coming from? I'll focus on the positive side of things. No, we, we don't have to be by bag. No. Sure? I, yeah. Okay, she said it. No beef, so don't no. push it. Nah. By the way, I'll focus on the positive side of things, right? Mm -hmm. What's your vision for the, I'd say the movie industry? Because you write, I heard you were looking forward to do a Yifon movie as well. What yeah. happened with that? Nothing is happening with it other than the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. when I started it, I just wanted the great movie out. But now I have a whole team. I have yeah. people who count on me on my every action. Yeah. And we decided that it was a wiser move to write the books first because this is what big Hollywood movies do mm -hmm. you, you gain a following let people fall in love with what's going on so that when you're making a movie it makes financial sense mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's gonna happen but I this is out we're hoping to get it in schools by next year and it's happening honestly and I'm gonna write two other ones by the time that's well distributed all over the world I think that the movie will be ready to come out so I'm sure at the back of your mind you've been scouting for some Cameroonian talent so far that you could work with yeah I've been. and I presume you shoot it here I when will you decide to at least 70% of the movie here. Other parts will be shot elsewhere because the certain parts are not set in camera in the movie. But most of it will be shot here. And you know what? I've been working on this for such a long time. I'm yeah. being an artist. I, I'm one of those people, right? I've never been part of the trend. I never follow trend. I never generally care about what people say. If it's a good or bad compliment for me, it's the same. I don't take it personally mm -hmm. because people are like, oh, what's that movie you're talking about? I, I really don't care about you. When the movie is making millions of dollars, that's what counts. <laughs> That's what counts. <laughs> when the movie will be done in a way that is, I want it to be very specific mm -hmm. in terms of the story, you'll be here. So like even the movement I was doing, when I started working on it, people were here was like, what's she trying to do? But I don't usually answer. I just do my thing. And I'm not here to please or displease anyone. I'm here to contribute to history. Uh, so could you identify one or two? No, one or two? I can't only because... Um, you know, that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer on it. I might be a producer when the time comes, if all if everything is right. Yeah. But I will not have, I will not pick the actor. We're going to pick like it will be a team effort. To, I have very on my ass. I have no. You'd like very, it to be. Yeah, I have suggestions. Even from a, I even have the footage of the very first audition still in my computer, and we also have suggestions not only from here but from other African countries as well. Yeah. But I'll pass it on. I don't want to be directly attached to the cast. What I'll be, what I'll have everything to do with is the story. I will be on the writing team, but cast wise, it's who 
fits the role it according the role. to the team. Yeah. Okay. Because I want it to be internationally recognized. So if I'm behind it, maybe I think this is good, but it's not necessarily what the rest of the world can see. So, but there's a bunch of Cameroonian. Some of them are not even actors. Some of them are people that I've seen that that could fit a certain just fit role. it so yeah. well, and so I have it in the back of my mind. Yeah. Talk about the Yefon Walk, which passed on recently and was a great success. Yeah. And you mentioned the Yefon game as well. You know, you've been going around and talking to schools oh, and the stuff. Oh, school tour. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what is going on in that regard? Yeah. What are you trying? What message are you trying to put out? Thank you. Um. So again, it starts from having a platform and how do you use it. I'm very big on certain things. One of them is the image of Africa, the young Cameroonian, the young Nigerian, the young African. Yeah. So a lot of us have certain issues with our confidence, evidence in the skin bleaching, the wearing of all this hair and all this stuff. Not because that's bad, but let it be an option, not a thing that must happen. Now, if we have, if I come to a classroom and I see one person that has bleached their skin, or one person wearing all this hair, I can say, okay, look, she wants. This is what she wants to do today. Yeah. I can't see three hundred people. That's a problem because when you go to America, you don't have three hundred white people having afros on. That's weird. Think it about it. It shouldn't be a condition. It shouldn't, no, it shouldn't, it be, shouldn't a be a condition. It should be a choice. Yeah. So I'm not here to criticize anyone's lifestyle, but again, like I said, I believe that Africa has a lot of resources of the world. But who's going to make decisions on those resources? You need people that are confident, who know that Africans are the shit. We have what you have. So if you want my land, you better be bringing five billion dollars. Don't come here with two billion and try to beg me out. Why, why should I give it to you? <laughs> so like I said, knowing that God gave me certain gifts, I know that if I use them properly, I can shift the consciousness of the young people. Yeah. So that when they become leaders, they'll make good decisions, not just for Cameroon, but for Africa. In so general. that's what I'm doing here. It's a program, we have a slogan that is like Y-E-F-O-N, like the name of the book. Okay. And it stands for Young, Empowering, Focused, Original and Nurturing. Yeah. Which I believe are not the complete answer in life, but it's a good place to start if to you start. want to work on yourself. Good. Okay. So the things that we do are like, we try to help the students figure out, you know, what do you want to be? Some of us don't even spend time to think about it. What gifts do you already have? Yeah. Then what can you add to it to become what? And then how do you pursue your dreams? So that's the first step. And then, you know, as the year, we're already putting together a program for the year coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of starting a foundation that would full time work on this, not just this school tour, but also student guidance in terms of how do you find a job, partnering with other students, uh, other people that give jobs to see how we can employ people, yeah. um, helping develop talents like writing them really good at, you know, just different things, spelling competitions, things that I think young students should have in their after school life. Yeah, I think that's yeah. really encouraging because lately we've gone through a spell of really negative news, you yes. know, in the news we've yes. been, you know, people killing themselves and a lady dying in front of a hospital. Mm -hmm. I was really, really traumatized when I heard the story of the young man who just went into a shop and, and cut his neck off. I mean, I have to say, for what it's worth, that's a very dramatic way to die. Like, you're trying to make I, a statement. I, I can't imagine it, how that would, would happen. Why would you do that? Why? But I think we don't pay a lot of focus on, you know, mental illness here in Cameroon. We don't understand what is depression because there were some images about some ladies out there who got undressed in the streets. You know, they took off all their clothes. And then, you know, on Facebook, I was disappointed to see a lot of people who referred it to, you know, they want money. So they have got into, you know, some calls and that's why they've been told to take off their clothes. Yeah. That could be true. I don't know because I don't believe in all of that. Yeah, I, but I do believe in all that for what it's worth. <laughs> Please let me take the time to say I believe in all of that. You no, know I believe why? people could go to extents to do certain things, no, but, but we don't happens. believe in depression. We don't understand depression. Yeah. That's a problem. I think we don't depression deal with depression. Happens, but that particular one you mentioned, right? You live in a world where I believe everything is possible. Why everything. am I saying that? Because I'm a writer and I know to take something and start writing, it yeah. came from somewhere, even if it's a spark. Whether it be aliens, witchcraft, anything, as far as I'm concerned, exists. Because we're dealing with a God that we don't completely understand. This guy is interesting. The fact that we don't know it doesn't appear to you doesn't mean that it's not somewhere. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's somewhere else. Maybe, maybe we're being watched right now. And if we're being watched, please don't appear here. We don't want to see We you. are being watched. Not right now. <laughs> we don't want to see you right now. We're just no, trying to do clean. Don't take me away right now. <laughs> no, seriously. But... It happens. People yeah. take off their clothes for money. I'm telling you. When, you, like, what school did you go to? Uni? Um, no, I was in England, London. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Well, no, I, I didn't go to school here. Yeah. Yubi was a colorful town. I mean, you're talking about people who have powder that can attract money. I'm, I'm not joking. I, I, I know people like this, so I know it happens. Do I want to be part of it? No, but no, I can identify that people do that. Honestly, but when you get stressed, yeah. how do you deal with your stress? Oh, I cry. 
buckets full of it, pillows full. I cry because first of all, I'm a dramatic person. Second of all, when I cry, I feel better. After I'm trying to imagine you with the tears all over like stubborn. Like, <laughs> Girl, you don't even know. Like, are you serious? A, or do oh, you do the sub like? No, it's coming out. But my voice is like, have you seen Kim Kardashian's crying face? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's like, I don't cry loud, but it's there. We'll take a look at five ways to deal with stress, and when we come back, Sandra is going to tell us all about her personal love. Yeah, you want to know, very right? <laughs> Dealing with stress in Africa has always been a big challenge as we do not pay attention to the mental state of our close ones. Here are my top tips on how to deal with stress and anxiety. First, always remember that the situation you're facing will come to pass. No one managing his or her life is devoid of stress and too much of it can lead to excess worry, nervousness, an upset stomach or difficulty breathing. The first step to overcoming such a negative feeling is to recognize that you're experiencing a very common emotional state, most commonly identified as anxiety. Although it's uncomfortable, the negative feelings will pass. Fighting anxiety can make it only stronger. Paradoxically, accepting that you're feeling anxious helps activate the body's natural relaxation response. As commonly said, the only constant factor in life is change. Try self-soothing techniques. When we are faced with an anxiety-inducing situation, our body's sympathetic nervous system automatically triggers physiological changes. Our breathing quickens, adrenaline is secreted, and our heart begins to race. Diaphragmatic breathing, which essentially is taking deep breaths helps decrease the heart rate. Progressive muscle relaxation is another self-soothing technique which helps relax the muscles that tend to tighten and become tense when we are stressed. Positive thoughts and positive self-talks increase emotional comfort and help reassure oneself. For example, this feeling will pass. I am safe right now. I have the power to make myself count. I can feel my heart rate slowing down. Your diet largely impacts your emotional state. Foods mostly associated with exasperating anxiety are ones containing caffeine and alcohol. Even consumed in small amounts, studies have found that the stimulating effects of caffeine can cause anxiety, trigger panic attacks, and increase feelings of nervousness and irritability. So avoid caffeinated products like coffee, colas, tea, and sometimes chocolate. These cause physical symptoms such as trembling and shaking. Similarly, although alcohol is often consumed to take the edge off, it dehydrates the body and ultimately increases anxiety. An imbalance of bacteria in the gut can also cause many symptoms associated with anxiety and mood disorders get more sleep and exercise everyone feels a little crabby after a rough night's sleep disrupted sleep is common in many emotional disorders and it's difficult to know which one started first the stress or poor sleep studies have shown that losing a few hours of sleep creates feelings of stress anger sadness and exhaustion exercise daily it is good for our physical health maintaining a regular healthy and non-obsessive exercise routine has been proven to reduce stress improve mood enhance self-esteem and increase energy levels during exercise the body releases chemicals called endorphins which interact with receptors in the brain causing euphoric feelings and reduction in physical pain and number five take time go out and have fun with friends and family it is always important to have a moment of distraction a moment of fun and a moment of joy with the close ones people tend to think that happiness is a stroke of luck something that would descend like fine weather if you're fortunate but happiness is the result of personal effort you fight for it try for it insist upon it and sometimes even travel around the world looking for it you have to participate with relentlessly in finding your happiness. What do you do for fun? Dance, cook. Cook? Mm -hmm. I love cooking. Can you cook? Yeah. <laughs> Dole. Uh, everything. I can cook for really good. Eru. Fufuan Jama Jama. Start, you know, first of all, from Banso, you start from Fufuan Jama and you work your way down. Banso? Yeah. I've heard about your accent. Yeah. Most of people's accents. Of Why do you think they mock you guys so much? Because we're everywhere. We're out there. We are go getters. And we don't let the accent intimidate us. We will talk the funny accent. You want to die? That's fine. But we'll be Say there, something you know? in English in your Bangsaw accent. I need to laugh. Um, 
I say I miss me. Look that do. <laughs> Did you just hear what I say? Do. Look I'm that do. <laughs> that's that's how we talk. But look, let I me love translate. It. Miss P, I say Miss P, lock that door. I feel cold. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so when next you come here, what are you looking forward to discovering outside of obviously movies and yeah, yeah. outside of work? Uh, more good people, honestly. Each time I come, I meet good people, mm -hmm. and I'm always looking forward to networking with more young people that are like-minded. Because you know how it is. You can't do something on your own. You always need a team of people. You always need to network. It's good to network among young people that you can see them trying to do something good, support it. So. But would you say you're an open book when it comes to situations like that? You'd happily work with people. You're yes. open to working with people. I'm very open people. to working with people. Um, but I'm big. I told you I'm very superstitious. For me, it's not about logic. It's about the vibe. That's how I. So act. you're scared someone will probably drop something in your drink. Oh no, I won't even die if you do that. That's your problem. But it's about. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. Come back. I won't you die. won't die. Mm -hmm. Why? Where have you been? I haven't been anywhere. Some part on that mango tree. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I haven't been anywhere other than myself. Mm -hmm. And I told you I'm very superstitious, meaning yeah. I'm big on energy. For example, you come into my house, before you speak, I'm feeling your vibe more than anything else. And mm -hmm. your vibe tells me all I need to know to do business with you. What did you feel about me? I'm comfortable. See, I'm running my mouth and just talking. I'm very comfortable. That says nothing. But sometimes De I'll details. No, I'm comfortable. Sandra details. I need five, I five, five things. No, I don't know that much me. yet, but I'm comfortable. I mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Sometimes I'll meet someone who says she's snobbish because I'll just be smiling and yeah. being quiet because yeah. my spirit is just like don't. It doesn't even, work with that person. Even, yes, don't even go into. It. And my spirit is never wrong about. So things. does your spirit work with your boyfriend? Or? I don't have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. You know how you know how you know how much I've traveled in the last year. I heard about a Nigerian guy, Sandra. Don't make me spill. Please, You're on camera. Tell us what you've heard. I'm willing to Joseph, share. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph Namdi. The hell Chukuka. is that? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell just happened? Who is that? I'm dating no one now, but if you talk about my ex. What happened to him? I mean, life happened. Life? La happened. life? Yeah, life. What did you do? No, you cheated? I, I hate, you lied? You know what? I hate this question. I'm actually a great girlfriend. So I hate those questions. No, it's. I travel a lot. Okay. And not everyone can, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. they want a girl who's always there, cooking the food and doing all this stuff. And I do that when I'm home, but when I'm gone, it's like, you're always gone. And I'm not willing to sacrifice to stay. Yeah. You know, you know in saying? entertainment, usually it's very tough for a woman to find a balance, mm -hmm. actually. Because when you're super ambitious, yeah. you know, you have goals and you need to get out there. It's difficult to find the right balance mm -hmm. to satisfying a man, they'll say. It's but a lot of women seem to make it happen for them. Yeah. At what point in your life do you think you'll be able to find that balance? When it happens, it happens. It's not a thing that you plan for. You meet someone and you... Again, for me, I told mm -hmm. you I'm dramatic. I, I don't, I, I can't deal with the, oh, let's, let's try it out. It either, it's either the connection is so strong that yeah. it cannot be apart or it's nothing. I don't do halfway. I love 150. I, everything I do in my life is all out. I can't do halfway. So on Valentine's Day, what did you do? I went to the orphanage. With, I spent time with some children and then at night I went out with a friend. And what did you do on the night out? We went, we went to have tea. Nothing we were romantic? Catching up. Nothing. No, we were catching up. I haven't Boring. seen him in a minute. Next I story. Know. Describe the ideal. Um, he is man. very intelligent. I love intelligent guys because I'm very intellectual and I like to talk about things. Mm -hmm. He is a great kisser. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he is good people, like five people. I'm going to put Sandra on a spot now. Oh you know, being a busy woman, very ambitious. She has to be out in five seconds all the time. It's always tough to get the makeup right. But in this industry, you have to get it right. 24-7. Mm -hmm. At least I think so. Yeah. So, Sandra, mm -hmm. you need to draw your eyebrows in 60 seconds. Can you do that? Uh, I will try. I try to do things when need be. So I'll try it. 60 seconds. That's Let's crazy. go. <laughs> And that's 20 seconds gone, so you've got 40 to go. That doesn't look good enough. Yeah. 30 seconds left. Sandra, you need to spot. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I need to spot. 
No! I told you the second time. Okay. We got five, four, three, two, one. Cut. <laughs> Not bad. episode with Sandra I wish I could keep her tied down forever but that's not possible so check her out on the social media link she mentioned above and stay positive stay alive and most importantly be happy until next time check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Miss P show and on Twitter at the Miss P show if you're on Instagram I am at Miss P happy goodbye